Hi, I'm Mark, one of the co-founders at Enclave Networks, and today I'd like to show you how Enclave works with Kubernetes. So for this tutorial, I have an Amazon Elastic Kubernetes service, that's an EKS cluster, running in the London region, EU West 2. And I also have an Ubuntu instance running in London on EC2 as well, and I'm going to use this Ubuntu instance to run kube control to connect to and manage my Kubernetes cluster. And I'm also going to use the same Ubuntu instance to run Enclave status, and Enclave will provide the private connectivity that I need into my Kubernetes cluster. The problem is I don't have any pods running on my cluster yet, so let's fix that. I have a, a deployment YAML template, and let's have a quick look at this before we actually apply it to our cluster. So at the moment we're configured to be running zero replicas, so let's change that to five. And we're going to run the Nginx container on port 80, and we're going to sidecar the Enclave container alongside it uh, and give it the relevant permissions it needs to create a TAN device inside the container. The only thing that's missing here is uh, providing a valid enrollment key for this container. Now, normally you might provide the enrollment key via secrets management tooling, but for this tutorial, I'm simply going to pass in an environment variable uh, to this container. So we need an enrollment key, we can get that from the portal. We've got two options of enrollment keys. We can use a general purpose enrollment key, or we can use an ephemeral enrollment key. And ephemeral enroll enrollment keys are designed for use cases such as this, where we have containers starting and stopping, maybe registering, enrolling to our account, and then unenrolling after a specific period of time after that container is terminated. So I already have a Kubernetes key set up here and ready to use. Uh, as any systems use this enrollment key to join our account, then they will be automatically tagged as K8S pods tags. tagged. And I actually have a policy set up, set up here, which uh, defines the traffic flow between any systems tagged as developers to any systems tagged with K8S pods. And my Ubuntu VM is also enrolled using Enclave, as you saw here, and it's tagged as developers. So if this goes to plan, then my Ubuntu system, tagged as developers, is also part of the policy that says that system, this Ubuntu machine, should be able to communicate with any systems that enroll and attach the K8S pods tag. So we'll pick up that enrollment key and we'll put it into our environment variable. We'll save our deployment YAML and we'll apply that to the cluster. So let's have a look at the systems in our account. And there they are starting up on the cluster and enrolling using the K8S pods enrollment key that we saw earlier. So what that means now is that we have systems enrolled using the K8S pods tag, and we have systems enrolled using the developers tag. And because of the policy in place, Enclave should have built connectivity for us between this development machine and each of those pods, and indeed it has. Here is our local identity, here is the connection that we maintain to the Enclave platform, and here is a connection to the first pod, the second, third, fourth, and fifth. Now we can ping each of these systems and we can also curl the contents from our, our Nginx host on that particular container. But I'm putting each individual container there and you'll notice that we have a DNS entry provided to us by Enclave for this container, and if we my right mouse button is uh, tedious. So this DNS record points to the Enclave IP address for this particular replica, and there it is. Our, our dig query output tells us that this host name resolves to that individual replica. But that's not great. What we really want is a single host name that can refer to any one of the replicas, any one of the pods. So let's try creating a new 
Nginx DNS record, and we will attach that to the K8S pods tag. And now if we run enclave status again, you can see that we still have the original default DNS name assigned to this pod, but this last pod now also responds to nginx.enclave, as does the pod above that and the pod above that. So if we dig nginx.enclave, now we can see that we have one of one of our five pods available to us. And that's it. Now all of my development team has private access to the appropriate Kubernetes pod or pods. Uh, DNS is built in, uh, and I didn't need to expose my, my Kubernetes cluster to the internet by configuring any ingress or load balances. So I hope this uh, tutorial was useful, and please do check out our other resources to learn more. Thank you.